What's up, y'all? It's your boy eBay Fight Predictions in the Bill Den. And this is your top five most improved fighters of 2021. I mean, this is obviously the eBay Fight Prediction Nation year end 2021 third annual awards. Y'all already know. But yeah, we're talking about improvement, we're talking about fighters that improved, we're talking about fighters that got better. Um, really, really good good years for underdogs but i mean like improvement doesn't mean you're a fucking underdog or something like that um it's just been a solid year i feel like for a lot of guys that a lot of people doubted but they're you know they're, they're doing their thing and i think that correlation has a lot to do with these guys and the nominees and the winner so man let's get to it and let's talk about it number five might not like this guy might have problems with this dude but I gotta go with Vicente Luque, man. I had to put him up here, man. The guy's really, really improved since his Wonder Boy fight. I know it was like a few years back. Um, he got. I, I mean, a lot of people forget Wonder Boy just didn't outpoint this dude. He literally beat the crap out of this dude. Like a lot of people don't realize that he beat the living shit out of Vicente. Go rewatch that fight. He beat the fuck out of him. He made him, like, I mean, Luke got to respect one. He beat the shit out of Luke. Like, he he hurt him. But uh, ever since then, man, he's had, I mean, incredible performance against, obviously it wasn't this year, but, you know, Nico Price, Randy Brown. I think Randy Brown wasn't this year. Uh, and then what he was able to do in this year, especially against T. Wood and uh, uh, supposedly against Michael Chiesa, uh, those were really impressive performances. I uh, finished both of those guys. I think in the first round via Darce. Um, he did get he did get rocked, so he hasn't improved on his defense. I feel like that's probably his number one issue. But um, and I do think he is a, a knockout waiting to happen. But um, yeah, he's a fun fighter to watch, man. And he's he's grappling is getting a lot better. His striking's always been good offensively. His offensive game is in in. Every aspect of MMA is solid, and it's just always getting better. It's always improving. His defense, I mean, needs work. I feel like he, he doesn't have any takedown defense, and uh, his submission game is all right. Uh, and he's, he's he, I don't know, he's, he gets hit a lot, so I do worry about that. But besides that, he's a fun fire to watch. A lot of people like him. Uh, and, yeah, he makes he made my number five spot. Uh, at number four, I got to go with Benil Dariush, man. Beating Diego Ferreira and Tony Ferguson this year. If I would have told you after his loss to Alex Hernandez that he beats, obviously Diego Ferreira, he already beat him once. Maybe you might believe it. But if I told you he, the guy that got flatlined by Alex Hernandez in four years probably will beat Tony Ferguson when Tony's about to fight for a fucking belt or has the interim title, you're going to be like, man, shut the fuck up, bro. You're crazy, right? Well, guess what? He did it. Uh, and I mean, he's been doing his thing. I mean, has he showed a lot of improvement? That that could be debatable, but I mean, he he. I feel like one thing I feel like he's really improved is his mental. I felt like a lot of times when I saw him fight against Alex Hernandez and especially against uh, Evan Dunham, if you remember that fight, they went to a draw actually. Um, it felt like he wasn't like in the fight, like he wasn't awake, he wasn't ready, he wasn't aggressive. He wasn't ready to fucking die out there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it felt like he's almost asleep, almost like you know how T would look like he don't don't want to be there. That's how I felt like about Benil when he fought Hernandez, and almost like he just didn't want to be there, and he just went out there just to get KO'd and go get a check and go back home, you know. And uh, I feel like he's gotten away from that. And he's ready to fucking fight now. Obviously, he still has some of his holes, right? He gets a little sloppy here and there, but I feel like right now he can get away with that. I mean, there's a few guys that can really punish him for that. Maybe Charles Oliveira, but I actually think he has a really good chance against Charles. And I don't think Islam is good enough on the feet to really punish him for that. Guys that can really punish him for that are maybe Gaethje or Dustin Poirier. But he has a grappling uh, advantage over those guys. So he, he matches up well with a lot of these guys. And um, I think Benil Dariush is probably one of the most well-rounded dudes in the game. And uh, has been doing his thing lately. So uh, really, really happy for him. And at number... Three, a guy that I really, truly believe has truly, truly improved, Song Yudong. I might not like this dude. I don't hate him, but um, did beat my boy Julio Arce. But, I mean, he is truly, truly improved. After his Kyler Phillips fight, I was ready to write him off. And uh, that dude looked amazing against, well, he didn't look amazing. They're close fights. 
against Casey Kenny, but looked amazing against Julia Ars. The striking, everything, he finished it. He just was on point. It was his night. I uh, gotta give him respect for that, man. Uh, Song Yidong has truly, truly improved and looking like a legitimate, legitimate star for that, uh, you know, alpha male team and that 135 pound division. So good on Song for making my third, you know, number three spot uh, in the list. And at number two, the dope fiend crackhead himself, Sean Strickland. Uh, that dude has really, really improved, man. Uh, the man has went through hell. I might not like to do because he beat my boy Brendan Allen. But, man, he to beat Jocko, and especially to beat Uriah Hall the way he beat him, uh, in every facet of MMA, like, Uriah can't even act like, oh, this guy just wrestled me. Nah, Sean Strickland put it on him. Uh, it was it was phenomenal. He broke his oral bone. Uh, out, like, he was able to outbox him, able to just outdo everything uh, to Uriah Hall. And I was shocked. I thought Uriah was going to beat him. I thought Uriah's reach advantage was going to help. And, I mean, even Sean was able to beat him. Uh, in the distance game and the reach management and if I told you the guy that got fucking destroyed by Zaleski Dos Santos is going out there and just battering fucking Uriah Hall you know you'd look at me like I don't know about that you know uh, same guy that lost to Ponzinibbio is going out there and fighting Jack Hermanson in a few months <laughs> in a top five you know UFC fight night main event you'd be like come on bro you're joking uh, he's truly truly improved and uh, that's I got to give him his credit. He's done his thing, you know. Uh, he's just put all these things together, and he's looking pretty, pretty good. And at number one for the most improved fighter of 2021, so some of you might disagree with me here. I'm going with Glover motherfucking Teixeira. Um, it's kind of crazy, right? I will say this right now. Jan has not made any of my awards this year and i know some people are gonna get fucking pissed about that <laughs> um but it is what it is uh <laughs> jan blahovich as i say i i did put jan actually um in my mid-year i put him in a lot of my mid-year awards but glover to sure doing what he is jan blahovich at ufc 267 completely blew everyone out the water blew jan's even jan had a pretty good comeback story an improvement story, right? Beating Adesanya this year, it's crazy. But um, it, it was really impressive. Don't get it twisted. I would have loved to put him in here. But I just, uh, you know, just seeing the way how Glover just completely dismantled him. Jan is just, he's old news and he's Rakic's next fucking meal ticket uh, for the title. And uh, and obviously he's going to get put in a fucking coffin. So, I, you know, I can't be talking about future dead people uh, on... <laughs> Future dead people on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking my shit, y'all. Talking my shit. Uh, but, man, Glover, uh, y'all know Glover's my fucking boy, man. I was really, really happy for him. It's very, well, hey, I don't want to brag about this, but I was one of the very few guys that was rocking Will Glover. I know a lot of, it was weird, man. You know, it's crazy. I'm not going to name no names, but, like, dude, so many people were hating on Glover. And then they switch, like, they switch up the very, like, day the very day I stream, like, it's crazy, like, oh, I'm going with Glover, da, 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 da. but, um, you know, it's, it's insane, so many people switched up, but so many people call me crazy, like, Glover's never touching that belt, bro, Jan's gonna fucking break his face, but it is what it is, uh, <laughs> like, I, I don't care, um, but we'll see, we'll, we'll fucking see what happens, but, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, he he got the belt. He proved a lot of people wrong. And, uh, you know, I, I was super, super happy for him. One of the most well-deserving title victories of all time. And again, I'll say it again. Put some respect on my boy Corey Anderson's name. But, but yeah, it is what it is. Love y'all and goodbye. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram and my Twitter. If you're new, uh, subscribe, like, comment, share the video. Let's get this eBay Fire Pernition Nation growing. Love y'all and goodbye.